excited uh, to hear what I potentially have to say is, is an amazing feeling. It's a huge change from the past. So yeah, thanks for coming. And yeah, it's, it's really awesome to be back. My name is Jeff. I'm also known as Jiho. I'm a co-founder of Sky Mavis. We're the inventors, the creators of a game called Axie Infinity. So I think when we, before we dive into Axie, I think it's really important to talk about the ethos of this movement, of how we believe the future games will work. So as game developers, we actually see ourselves in this space as nation builders, where we are building these virtual economies where people are playing, living, and even beginning to work. We think that NFTs are a vessel to deliver property rights to players and turn them into something way more than players, turning them into true citizens of these digital economies. This is Axie. If you're not familiar with Axie, uh, yeah, we can talk about it a little bit. The, uh, each Axie is a digital pet. You can battle them, you can collect them. They're kind of inspired by games that we grew up playing, like Pokemon and Tamagotchi. Our goal is to introduce the world to something that can be a little bit scary, right? Like, people don't really know exactly what this crypto thing is, right? It might be about trading and speculation for a lot of the world. Our goal is to introduce them to crypto through something that's fun, accessible, and nostalgic. I think nostalgia is the most powerful of human emotions. So far, we've done quite well. <laughs> Axie's generated uh, over a billion dollars in total revenue, with a lot of that uh, volume, co volume coming just in the last few months. We've seen like sales that have made big headlines as well. For example, a plot of uh, a group of nine land plots actually sold for over one and a half million dollars in our universe earlier this year. We are the number one NFT project of all time, across almost all metrics. We've done over $2.7 billion of, market, of marketplace volume on our in-house NFT marketplace. We have had over 850,000 people actually buy NFTs. Um, yeah, there are around 2.4 million people who actually own Axies, and we'll talk a little bit about why <laughs> there are a lot of owners and there are only one, basically the, the number of uh, buyers is actually one third the number of owners. This is actually because of a really special empowering mechanic that was birthed by our community. So we'll talk a little bit about that later. So first, yeah, how do you get started with Axie? It's actually quite difficult right now. Even over the years, we've tried to make it easier to get started, more accessible. That's always led to a higher growth rate. and it, it supercharges our community, our economy, but it's still quite difficult. So in order to get started, first you need to acquire a cryptocurrency, download uh, our uh, digital wallet, the Ronin wallet, buy some axes. <laughs> you can then play the, uh, the, you can then download the application, and finally you'll then be able to start earning rewards like Axis and uh, SLP, which are actually tokenized in-game currencies with different utility in our universe. For example, the Smooth Love Potion is actually used to create and breed axes. So it's really important to understand that the only way to create new axes is by spending SLP to create a new axie. We see axie as an entire universe of future and potential games. So right now, while you can breed and battle your axes, we're also working on more game modes. So we're working on land where you'll be able to collect resources, fight for control of territory, and even in the future, host a variety of different experiences on top of your land. So I think when we think about how to actually build an NFT game, I think we have to think about like what are the unique advantages that we can use that are enabled by crypto and NFTs to give us a leg up on traditional game developers, 
right? So in traditional mobile games, for example, right, things might be free to play, the developers might be selling items directly to players, right? This is, these are primary sales, and they're taking 100% of in-game spend. So 40% to 50% might go to the developer, but a lot of that money is also going to the app stores, to the game publishers. Our model is a little bit different. In Axie, each Axie represents an ability to actually access the content within our universe. And we don't sell Axies ourselves, so it's actually the player base that are creating and distributing the Axies by breeding and selling them on the marketplace. And the way that I see this is that actually the players are, have replaced these middlemen. These middlemen are the game publishers, they're the app stores, and our players are replacing them. And because they're replacing them and onboarding their friends and family, take, doing so much of the education, of course it makes sense to share a lot of the value created by this in-game economy with them. So yeah, we believe that the player market is king. Around 90 to 95% of all value in our ecosystem actually goes to the player base. Another way to look at this, right, is that this is just a network monetization model applied to a game, right, where the Axie protocol is taking a 4.25% commission from all kind of in-game activity. Why is it flashing? Um, <laughs> yeah, so the Axie protocol takes fees from things like the marketplace and the breeding fee. Another way to look at this is that, right, we've just gone from a, a model where the game developers are taking 100% of in-game spend. You can see this is a 100% tax rate, and we've lowered that all the way down to 4.25%. So of course, this is something that would, I think, make gamers feel more empowered and uh, more, uh, more ownership within these digital economies. So this model has led to the rise of something called play to earn, play and earn as well, which is the idea that you can actually earn these in-game resources by playing Axie and then swap them for uh, you know, cryptocurrency, which you can then exchange for fiat and use to pay for food, medical bills, home rent, etc. in the physical world. This has made it so that Axie has become far more than a game. These are, these are Lolo and Lola. They are from a documentary called Play to Earn, and they operate a store in the Philippines. During the COVID pandemic, they were having a really difficult time. Their foot traffic for their store dropped tremendously and they were having a hard time paying the bills. But they found Axie and got really into it and were able to use Axie as supplementary income to actually help them weather the last couple of years. So a lot of people, they focus on the play to earn mechanic. I understand it's the, I think the new, the flashy thing that we've done that is kind of, I, I think in some ways an, an entire, entirely new invention. But I also want to say that when we ask our players what they find most uh, enjoyable about Axie or what is their favorite aspect of the game, over 50% are saying that it's things other than the in-game economy. Right, the gameplay, the community. And that's really important. If everyone is playing just to make money, it's not a sustainable economy. There have to be people who are in it for other reasons, right? They might be spending for fun and status and to facilitate experiences and relationships in these digital worlds. This is a chart of our in-house marketplace volume. I think the most important part of this chart is actually the first two years where you can barely see anything. That was a really important time during the bear market that allowed our community to get really close to each other. I think that community is actually fermented and marinated in bear markets and you kind of reap the rewards and see the result of that effort during times like this. So yeah, shout out to our <laughs> Axie OGs. We couldn't have made it here. Not yet. Okay, anyways, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
it's been amazing. Thank you. See you all at the Axie Rally in Brooklyn. You can find the link on my Twitter. Much love. Thank you very much, Jeffrey Zerlin. We have an amazing panel coming up for you. Five extremely interesting people. Michael Arnold.